so I needed to do something about dust collection because the first couple of cuts that I did made quite a bit of dust. It's actually sticking to the spindles and the motors and everything because of the static electricity that's being created by the machine. So I actually went on Amazon and I looked for an 80 millimeter spindle dust boot and I found this. This is the cheapest one I could find. It has a four inch hose connector and it has an 80 millimeter spindle adapter. 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 This is, a, this is technically made for a 100 millimeter spindle. What I quickly found out was that the distance between The distance between here and here, or this distance right here, was too big. So when I put it on the machine, this would actually rub up against the Z-axis housing, dust inhibitor, I don't know what you want to call it, it's just a piece of metal, it's in front of the Z-axis, but it would rub up against it down, up against it when it goes up and down. So my solution was to take this, throw it away, make my own spindle adapter with an offset circle so that this would go in here like such and reduce this thickness. I'll have the plans for this on the link. I'll put a link to it below. Um, it's going to be just the G code though. Um, it is for our uh, Baltic birch plywood, 18.4 millimeters thick. I'm using a quarter inch fruit, fraud, fruit, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, down cut spiral bit. Um, I'm running at 800 millimeters a minute at 20,000 RPM. Makes a little bit of noise. She screams a little bit, but that's okay. So, I made this. But, you probably also noticed in the video that I have a two and a half inch dust port going to my CNC machine. Now this does feed from a four inch, but I don't have any extra fittings with me right now, and I don't feel like running out to Rockler or ordering anything from Amazon, which I probably should have done when I bought this. But instead, I made this. This is an adapter that will fit right up here. It's sort of snap in. It's a pretty tight fit. I might have to sand it a little bit more. But you get the idea. So it'll go in there kind of like that. And then my hose will click into it. Kind of like that. And that's how that'll all work. I hope. I'll find out in a minute when I get it all put together. Before I forget, one of the coolest parts about this is what you get the, the brush pieces to put in here yourself and you use the screw holes to, to put them in, but this comes apart like so. So this piece mounts to your spindle, this piece mounts to your hose, and when you put them together, they snap and they stay on, hopefully. Seems pretty solid. We'll see. There'll be a link to this product in the below, below to it. That's what it looks like when it gets in there. I had to sand off eh, metric or imperial, imperial couple thou in metric, a eh, couple hundredths of a millimeter to get that to fit right. But that's a pretty snug fit at this point. So this is what it's going to look like when it's on here. Um, it is on pretty good right now. Got a little nervous about sticking my hands up in here. The machine is live actually. That's a stupid thing to do. Now we're, we're set to a point where it won't go off. But the thing that I need to test, well, things to point out first. Uh, one thing to notice is that I had to cut a small relief cut in the front of the um, plywood adapter ring to make it so that um, it could actually fit around the spindle and fit inside this plastic a little bit better. I guess I made mine a little bit too big. Um, mileage may vary. But the real test will be is if this can go up and down without dragging. So, let's see.
there is literally maybe three millimeters of space back there that is, uh, is all we have for clearance. But for how this is going to work, that is enough. So I'm happy with it. So this is the strip brush that it comes with. It's actually pretty soft, pretty pliable. But one of the things I noticed is that it is just a hair too long. So I got to do some trimming. Or do I? Yeah, I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of trimming because the other brush is going to bump into this and they're not going to fit quite right. So I'm going to trim that down a little bit and we're going to see what it looks like when we're done. Okay, it took off about an eighth of an inch. You can see this is still just a little bit long, but I'm going to see if I can get that to press down in there and get that to fit a little bit better. I'm going to put the screws in and we're going to see if we can get this whole thing mounted up yet in the next couple of minutes for you. Just hold tight. Okay, with all the screws in, this is what it looks like. Pretty decent. Not bad for $30, really. The last one I had I made myself and it worked pretty good, but I'm hoping that this one works a lot better. And the gap seems to be pretty good in there. Doesn't seem to be impeding anything. Still snaps together tight. So I'm really hoping that that's going to work for me. But uh, we'll see shortly. Okay, so I got the whole thing on here, and this is how it looks right now. Um, it goes up and down really smooth. Uh, my adapter for the hose fits really well. The brushes and everything, I don't want to put my hand under there because there's a sharp bit under there. But uh, they, they are pretty much uh, equal with the depth of that bit. That is uh, That bit actually sticks out about an inch and a half. So it's going to be a little bit too tall for like a V-carve bit, um, unless I get a half inch one. But just want to show you that you know this pops off pretty easy. I can set it to the side. I can change my bit and I can put it back on when we're ready to run. All in all, pretty happy with this. Only time will tell. But so far, this looks like a pretty good solution. I'm hoping that it doesn't make some horrific noise like whistling when we send air through it, but uh, we'll find out right now. <laughs> attachment that I bought for my 6090 CNC router that I bought and I've been kind of going through this journey with. I'm really hoping this helps keep all my dust down. I'm really hoping that this works well enough that I don't have to come up with a different solution. But as of right now, it seems to be working pretty good. As you saw in the last little part, it fits well. I lifted some dust up underneath it. It took it. So that's a good sign. I'm hoping that uh, I can just clean my machine off and then uh, from this point forward, it will pretty much remain dust free. But with that, I'm going to finish this particular step of my journey, and we will get into the next part, which is, uh, I think I'm probably going to go through some Mach 3 stuff that I have sort of figured out and what my settings are, my screen that I use and whatnot. For those of you that are interested, um, if you are, leave a comment down below. Um, just remember to like the video as well, and if, uh, if you're so inclined, hit the bell, and that way you'll know when I post something next. Good day.